here to tell you about plants. Do you know that plants make their own food? Oh yes, they do. And we are going to learn about how plants make their own food. Today's topic, photosynthesis. Plants make their own food by photosynthesis. Photosynthesis takes place in the leaf of a plant. The process of photosynthesis can be written as the equation Carbon dioxide plus water and using the energy from sunlight captured by the chlorophyll in leaves will produce glucose and oxygen. Leaves from plants play an important role in the process of photosynthesis. The leaves from a plant need carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and water from the ground to synthesize food in the presence of sunlight. The chemical reactions take place when chlorophyll absorbs light energy from the sun and turns carbon dioxide and water into glucose and oxygen. The oxygen then diffuses out of the leaves into the environment while glucose being exported to other parts of the plant. Let's take a look at the structure of a leaf and find out about the process of photosynthesis. Leaves are attached to the stem. Most leaves have large flat surface area which is suitable for absorbing sunlight. This is a cross section of a leaf. A leaf is usually coated with a waxy covering called a cuticle. The cuticle is waterproof to help prevent water loss. It is also transparent to allow light to enter the leaf. Below the cuticle is the upper epidermis. It consists of a single layer of cell. It is thin and transparent to allow light to penetrate the leaf. This layer of the leaf is the palisade mesophyll. The palisade cells have a high density of chloroplasts. The process of photosynthesis takes place in the chloroplasts. Chloroplasts contains green pigments called chlorophyll. The chlorophyll in green plants is important because it captures the energy from the sunlight for the process of photosynthesis. Below the palisade mesophyll layer is the spongy mesophyll layer. The spongy mesophyll layer consists of cells which have an irregular shape. The cells have fewer chloroplasts. They are loosely arranged and between each of them are air spaces that connect the mesophyll to the stoma. Stoma is the tiny pore found mainly on the underside of a leaf. Carbon dioxide from the atmosphere diffuses into the leaf through the stoma and oxygen diffuses out of the leaf via the same route. This is the vascular bundle. The vascular bundle consists of xylem and phloem. Xylem transport mineral ions and water to the leaf, while phloem transports glucose, the product of photosynthesis made in the leaf to all parts of the plant. Glucose and oxygen are the products of photosynthesis. Plants use glucose for energy. The energy is used by plants for growth and for maintaining temperature. Excess glucose is stored as starch in different parts of the plant such as the leaves, stem, roots and fruits. Another product of photosynthesis is oxygen. All living things rely on the oxygen released by plants during photosynthesis for respiration. Oh, I really like plants. Plants give us the fresh air that we breathe. Ooh, oxygen, fresh air. We can tell if photosynthesis has occurred 
by testing the presence of starch in the leaf by using iodine solution. Why starch? Remember, extra glucose is stored as starch in different parts of the plant. Let's look at the experiment to determine the presence of starch in plants. Experiment to determine the presence of starch in plants. We can tell if photosynthesis has occurred by testing the presence of starch in a leaf. We do this by using iodine solution. First, place the leaf in boiling water and let it boil for 5 minutes. This is to soften and break the cells of the leaf. After 5 minutes, turn off the Bunsen burner. Pour ethanol in a boiling tube. And soak the leaf in the ethanol. The ethanol will remove the chlorophyll from the leaf. When the leaf has lost its color, place the leaf in water. This is to soften and to rinse off the ethanol. Place the leaf on a white tile and test the leaf with iodine solution. The leaf turns dark blue. The leaf turns dark blue because it contains starch. This shows that photosynthesis has occurred. Experiments to determine the factors needed for photosynthesis. Do we need carbon dioxide and light for photosynthesis? Let's find out. Procedure Two potted plants, A and B, are left in a dark place for two days to get rid of any starch present. Each plant is then placed in a bell jar and put in the sunlight for a few hours. Fill a beaker with sodium hydroxide solution. Put the beaker in bell jar B. The sodium hydroxide will absorb carbon dioxide in bell jar B. Test a leaf from plant A and B for starch. Record your observations in a table. In plant A, the iodine turns dark blue on leaf. This shows that photosynthesis has occurred. In plant B, the iodine does not turn dark blue on leaf. This shows that photosynthesis has not occurred. Conclusion Photosynthesis did not occur in leaf B because there is no carbon dioxide. This shows that carbon dioxide is needed for photosynthesis. A plant is left in a dark place for two days to get rid of any starch present. Choose a leaf from the plant. Use a strip of black paper to cover a part of the leaf. Clip the black paper with paper clips. Put the plant in sunlight for about 3 hours. Test the leaf for starch. Record your observations in a table. Conclusion Photosynthesis did not occur in the covered part of leaf because there is no sunlight. Only the exposed part of leaf
contains starch. This shows that the presence of sunlight is needed for photosynthesis. The role of photosynthesis in maintaining a balanced ecosystem. Plant cells, like other living cells, are constantly respiring both day and night. This means that they are producing carbon dioxide all the time. But during the day, plants absorb some of the carbon dioxide for photosynthesis and release oxygen into the atmosphere. Therefore, green plants are important in sustaining the carbon and oxygen levels in the atmosphere. This is important to maintain a balanced ecosystem. There are two important natural cycles that involve photosynthesis, that is the carbon and oxygen cycles. Carbon cycle the carbon cycle is a cycle by which carbon, in the form of carbon dioxide, is removed and then restored again in the atmosphere to maintain a constant level. Carbon is taken from the atmosphere in the following way. When the sun is shining, plants use photosynthesis to convert carbon dioxide from the atmosphere into glucose and release oxygen in the process. The glucose, which is a form of carbon, will then pass into the body of animals when the plants are eaten. Carbon is also released into the atmosphere in many different ways. When animals and plants are breathing, they release carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. When animals and plants die, they will decay due to the action of fungi and bacteria. In the process of decaying, carbon dioxide is released back into the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide can also be released into the atmosphere through the combustion of organic materials like fossil fuels. Examples of fossil fuels are coal, petroleum products and natural gas, wood and organic waste. Oxygen cycle The oxygen in the atmosphere is needed by all living organisms. The oxygen cycle is a continuous cycle of processes by which oxygen is removed and restored in the air to maintain a constant level. The oxygen cycle helps maintain the percentage of oxygen in the air of 21%. Plants mark the beginning of the oxygen cycle through photosynthesis. Plants absorb carbon dioxide and release oxygen. Oxygen is taken from the atmosphere for use in respiration of plants and animals, decomposition of dead animals by bacteria and fungi, rusting of iron, Combustion of fossil fuels like natural gas, coal and petrol, wood and organic waste. A world without plants. Humans and animals would have nothing to eat if the world is without plants. Some of your food comes directly from plants, rice, bread, fruits, nuts, coffee and tea, milk, butter, eggs, and the meat that you eat all come from animals which eat plants. The fish that you eat mostly feed on other sea creatures that eat plants. Green plants play an important part in sustaining the carbon dioxide and oxygen levels in the air. We rely on the oxygen released by plants during photosynthesis, which you, and like all other animals, need for respiration. Bye now. Bye. Ribbit. Ribbit.